Hello there. Uh, this tutorial video will be um, will talk about the save game feature and capabilities of uh, Blueprint Attributes plugin to be able to serialize and deserialize to save and load um, attributes, gameplay attributes into and from a save game object. Uh, I have a few slides that goes over the save game features and here they are. The usual flow to implement such a, such a thing is uh, to use a save game object. That save game object will have a special property, a special variable with a, a special type uh, that will act as our binary data that the serialized ability step component node that you can see will use. It will read and write uh, from it. Uh, it's a theory of bytes, if you want. So yeah, let's uh, let's go. Let's start, and uh, I'm going to show how you would implement such a thing. The project is uh, the same as we used for the first two videos, uh, and we have a character with few attributes. Uh, in the first video, we added the elf attribute, max elf. Elf regenerate and the damage meta attribute, and in the second one, which was about uh, execution class, uh, we added uh, attack power prop, um, attribute and an armor attribute. The first thing we need to do um, is to create a save game object. I have one right there. It's a child of you save game, and it, we need one variable to hold and uh, the serialized data. Uh, from the ability system component attributes, uh, which is an array of bytes. Uh, a byte is a 8-bit number. Uh, now that we have this, in the character itself, I have set up already two keys. Uh, on control S, we're going to trigger the save game logic. And on control L, we'll load from the save game and update the attributes uh, for the character. So yeah, let's uh, let's start. I created um, just before a little helper, helper function, which is called load or create save game object. All it does is um, it checks if we have a save game object already. If we don't, it's going to create a save game and return it as a result. If we have, it's going to load from the slot cast to the correct BP save game, the correct type, and return it as a return value for the for the function. And uh, if I look maybe at the documentation, uh, the usual flow and what we're going to demonstrate right there follows this flow, this typical uh, flow. Uh, so you would use this to either load or create a new save game object on control S when you want to save just to be able to get back the binary data variable that you can pass in into this node, the serialized ability system component. It's a method, a static method from a, a blueprint syst, uh, function library provided by the plugin where you pass in the binary data you want to write to, the ability system component you want to read the attributes from, uh, you make sure that the boolean is saving set to true in this case. Once this node runs, the binary data is updated into the same game object, and we can call this method from the engine uh, to save game to slot. It's going to serialize all the attributes in the ability system component into a file uh, that you could then find in the saved directory under your project folder save directory and save game uh, subfolder. On load, uh, we do something really similar. We check if the save game exists, because if we don't have one, we can't load it from there. Uh, if we don't, we just print single. Uh, if we have, we load the, the, game, the save game from slot, cast to the correct type, just to get back the binary data again. And this time we call the exact same method, but we make sure that is saving Boolean is uh, false. This will dictate uh, 
de, de if we serialize or deserialize, if we write to the, the archive or if we load back from it. Uh, in this case, when we load, the binary data would be filled with the previous snapshot we have saved. It would write the attributes and update their base and current value. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Let's uh, demonstrate in game and in the editor how it would look. Uh, the first thing we need, let's start with the save game, save logic on control S. Uh, we need the save slot name. I have one variable right there already filled up. It's called save. Its default value is save test. Uh, then we need, since we already have the save game object of the correct type can get back the binary data variable and make sure that now we can use serializability system component, which comes from the, the plugin itself. Uh, it needs the ability system component we want to serialize, the binary data. Okay. Once we run this node, uh, the save game object and its variable is um, updated, and we can then use save game to slot. Make sure that we use the same slot name. And that we can pass the save game object that we want to save. And that's pretty much all there is to it for save. Uh, maybe I could just add a print string to see on screen when we save and when we load. Okay. Once we have that, uh, maybe I could show um, the save game folder uh, and the file generated by this. Could be that's the project folder in the save game saved directory. You would have a save games folder once you save something. And if I load in game, it control S for now, it's not really visible in game, but we have a save game object and file. No, to be able to demonstrate that it's actually working we need to implement the load um, logic. We'll start with the checking with if the save game object actually exists. If it doesn't, we can't really load from it. Always make sure that we use the same slot name. Move a branch. If we do have a save game object, Call the equivalent of save game to slot to load it back. Load the game from slot. Again, same slot name. Once we have it, since the return value is a U save game, we need to cast it down to our specific type where we can get back the binary data. And call actually the exact same method as we did for save, but this time we make sure that is saving boolean is set to false. It will make, it will tweak, um, it will change the the way uh, the if we save into it or load uh, from the archive. Uh, in this case, if the is saving boolean is false, it's going to uh, read from the binary data we have saved before and update the ability system component attributes we have if we have them granted. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much all we need. That the very most, I would say, basic setup for save. Uh, if you need to handle multiple actors, it would be a bit more involved. Uh, maybe I will go through that just in a minute. Uh, let's load it. Again, not test in game. Uh, what I will do 
instead of uh, applying damage to the other character and uh, increasing its armor, I'm going to apply the same effect on myself. When I hit T, you can see the, both the health attribute and the armor attribute are changed. I still have the regen effect going on, but here I start with a minus 100 armor. If I hit S right now, we have we add the elf at 15, the armor at 80. One thing I should probably not forget to is to because it's pretty important. You need to mark the attributes you want um, to save as a, as a save game property. Here you can do this with this checkbox. So I want elf and maybe just armor. If I don't do that, uh, the attribute won't get serialized into the save game object. And let's do it again. I'm going to apply some damage to myself, increase the armor to, let's say, 80. I will hit Control S at 10. We have saved the state of the AB system component and its attributes, just the attributes. And now if I hit play again, we start at minus 100 for the armor. The elf is at 65 and going up with the region effect. If I hit control L, you should see uh, the attributes updated based on the snapshot we had before. So yeah, that's pretty much all the save game stuff for um, a single actor. Uh, you can think of this setup as a, yeah, when you save something uh, for the attributes, it's kind of a, like a snapshot uh, that you store as a save game file and uh, you can load it later. Typically, instead of using control L, to uh, get the value back. Uh, you would apply this logic on when you load the level uh, to initialize the character stats and attributes based on the previously saved uh, attributes. Thanks for watching.